I want to call our meeting to order. It is it is 7.03, and we do have a quorum tonight. So I would like us to go ahead and uh, move forward. Um, Chairman, I would let uh, Ms. Uh, Craig Paul do a roll call. Pardon? She'd like to do a roll call. Okay, yes. Uh, I'll... Uh, Everybody announce it, uh, that they're here. Chairman Middleman? Uh, yes, here. Member Chernis? Member Scott? Here. Member Kilgore? Present. Member Frias? Member Smith? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, this is the citizens to be heard section in which nobody has signed up tonight that I know of, unless our city attorney wants to be heard. No, okay, okay. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna move right into the consent agenda and uh, see if, Anybody would like to uh, make a motion regarding two meeting minutes, the one from December uh, 7th and the one from January 4th. Do I hear a motion? Um, Rita Scott moves to accept the consent agenda as written. Uh, I have a comment to make. Well, do do we vote before I can even make a comment? Ms. Scott's motion needs to be seconded, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And then, and then there, there can be brief discussion, but okay. to a minimum. All right. Do I hear a second agenda. for the consent agenda? Approval? Anybody? What do we do when we don't get I'll I'll make a second. If I can do that. Well, the motion would have failed for lack of a second, and then you could have done whatever it is that you wanted to say. No, no, can, no I just have what he can do, Mr. Chairman. What you can do after the motion is seconded, you can ask to pull an item from the consent agenda, and then the commission, the committee, can then discuss the item you've pulled. Okay. But um, the is the consent agenda just the two sets of minutes? Yes. Okay. So, is there a problem with one set of the minutes? Yes. Uh, okay. I would like to pull. Uh, page two of the January 4th uh, minutes uh, that was conducted on January 4th. And uh, there are okay. some additions and some corrections. Yes. Okay, so if you could now go ahead and have, have a vote on Ms. Scott's motion as you seconded it, which would only be in regard to the minutes of the December 7th meeting. We can get those minutes approved then the committee can discuss whatever you have to comment on on the January 4th. Okay. You and you read it, redo your motion because you said the consent agenda. We'll call for a vote on my motion. On what? Call for a vote. On the December 7th, uh, 2nd, anybody? Uh, uh, Mr. I'll, I'll Kilgore seconds it. I'll vote in favor of Just, the motion. All, all, all you all have to do is vote in favor of the motion. Vote in favor. And that'll of the take motion. care of it. Okay. Now, okay. So now your December seven minutes are approved on a motion by Ms. Scott, seconded by Chairman Middleman. And the floor is back to Chairman Middleman to discuss the January four minutes, not just page two, but anything anyone wants to comment on. All right. Now, do we even make a motion on the January 4th one yet? Um, because you have comments and potential corrections, I, I would recommend you go through those. Okay. So um, uh, Ms. Craig or I can make a note of them as you as you say them, and then there can be discussion on that and, and ultimately a motion. Okay. I, uh, I wanted to comment on page two of the January 4th minutes. Uh, the first sentence uh, comment says the exa ex existing asphalt driver would be completely removed and there would not be a connection to the street. It doesn't say what street. I think it need, I believe that was for Foxhall. Am I correct? It would not be a connection to Foxhall. That's one correction. The other correction, I believe, is uh, 
having said that, did we agree that night uh, that it was presented by Antonian that there would be no no uh, driveways connections from Fox Hall uh, into the campus because apparently there is still one where the gate is, uh, I guess, for uh, sporting events. It says there is an existing gate going into the area where football and baseball players park. We would appreciate a tree buffer. Uh, uh, we we only approved the plans that were shown to us by the um, architecture firm, and so they're closing the two driveways at the front part of the property. That's that would involve the new uh, gym. women's gym, uh, the girls' gym. Um, so we what we we were only discussing that part. If there's a gate further back on the property, that was not in our scope. Well, they did discuss uh, uh, buffering all the way back, which would have gone probably beyond where the gate was. But um, the, uh, the gate was not the gate wasn't shown on the plans that we saw. Do you remember seeing a gate, Mister? No, and I just no saw the gate. two. So that's not relevant. The so two that went from the parking okay. lot to Fox. Then my initial comment. Uh, naming Fox Hall in the first sentence is the only change that I believe is necessary for uh, for uh, those minutes. Uh, does anyone want to make a motion uh, conditionally with these this change accordingly to that minute, the minutes of January fourth? Um, sure, I can make a motion to approve. The meeting minutes for January 4th, 2023, with the amended sentence at the top of page two to read the existing asphalt driver would be completely removed and there would not be a connection to Fox Hall. Okay. I can second. All in favor? Unanimous. Oh, sorry, Kilgore. Okay, that was good. So we're going to go to the regular agenda items. Tonight, the tree ordinance is the only discussion, the only item on the agenda. And I would like uh, to open uh, the, the uh, time for uh, discussion within our committee regarding uh, whatever uh, item do you want to discuss relative to what we've already completed why don't um why don't i present the findings of the subcommittee on the applicability section of of the ordinance i wish you would thank the, you the last page of your packet contains the um the text that the the subcommittee developed right we we looked at the at the issue as a as a matter of balancing balancing uh, burden on residents and citizens with uh, environmental and, and, and tree protection. We, we looked at the, the spectrum of absolutely no burden on people and 100% protection of trees versus clear cutting of lots effectively. And our discussion brought us to, to a position where we thought, reasonable restrictions could be accepted on on both sides. So what we ended up with was a broadly applicable 28 point or 48 point 24 that first sentence, you know, upon adoption of city council, this article applies to all zonings. And then we carved out three exceptions from the applicability of this ordinance. So three circumstances under which the ordinance would not apply uh, period and first one was you know as, as you can see there heritage and protectable trees so located as to unreasonably restrict access to the property we 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 felt that that was a a reasonable thing to accept so that if you had a heritage or a protectable tree that was blocking access unreasonably blocking access to your property that tree could be removed um, without further involvement of the ordinance itself. But if you haven't, 
you got something that what what if you do not have a uh, tree blocking uh, a driveway uh, under this? Then the exception. ordinance would continue to apply. Oh, it would. And that exception would not be available to you because okay. that heritage or protectable tree in question is not unreasonably blocking, okay. uh, restricting access to the property. That's reasonable. Okay. The second one, and this was this language at the at the beginning of of the exceptions two and three upon application to the city was in uh, response to the comment that we heard from. Uh, the city. I don't remember who said it, but we want people, even if they don't, we want people to get permits for, for removals because it helps people know what's going on. It, it helps, it helps with the, the tracking and the understanding of, of what's happening so that, but we don't want it to be particularly burdensome. So if you ask for a permit under exceptions two or three, you're going to get one. It's not not going to be a, a convoluted review process. So uh, if you apply to the city, an owner occupant of a residential property in zoning in these specific zoning areas, A, AA, B, and RR, will get the permit to remove heritage trees and protectable trees, which are dead, dying, diseased, or posing an imminent risk to an existing structure such that pruning or recovery is not practical. We put in the imminent risk carve out for instances on which one member of the committee, I don't remember who it was in a, in a prior meeting, discussed a protectable tree that was impinging on gutters and the roof line of their home and such that it, there was no alternative. It was the, that was an imminent risk to the structure. It was in fact, doing it or just about to. We put in the imminent risk language to, to deal with an argument of, well, this tree is like five feet from my house. In 20 or 30 years, it's going to hit my roof line. So I'm going to take it out now. That's why we use the word imminent. It has to be an imminent risk. We just had an ice storm. The tree is now leaning and roots are hanging out of the ground. It's leaning towards my house. That's an imminent risk. So that's why we use the word imminent. And they can come to the city and get they a permit to, the to have it removed. Permit to take care of the tree, no problem. So that's why it's called an, part of an exception to the ordinance, because otherwise they'd have to go through all the uh, uh, right. work they'd have to do uh, under the terms of the ordinance that makes sense it's to decrease the burden um to so to there's with the tree that has to be that is posing an imminent risk to the structure so we'll still be preserving our trees it's just going to be the task to remove trees to be a little bit uh uh, uh convenient for a property owner uh under certain circumstances exactly now we we'll discuss the third one if you will Mr. Gilgore. So again, upon application to the city owner occupants of residential properties in the zonings will be given a permit to remove up to three protect protectable non-heritage trees in a calendar year for the purpose of making improvements upon the property. This was our effort to, again, strike that balance between an ordinance, the prior version of the ordinance pretty much made anybody come anytime to the city if they wanted to do anything with a protectable tree. What we looked at with this was easing that a little bit, but, but not obviating it entirely. So this, what this allows a person to do is if they want to, we'll use the example of put in a pool and they've got you know, a, you know, three protectable trees that are in the way of the only place that this pool can go or a reasonable place to put this pool, then they can, without additional burden, take out those three protectable trees. Do they need to get a permit? To do Upon so? application to the city, they okay. will be given okay. a permit. So there's no, no extra rigmarole. You just apply and you will get that permit. 
we picked calendar year as as the time frame in which to do this looking at a scenario in which maybe you had a bigger project and by putting it in calendar year you can take three trees out in december and your next year's trees out in january so in that two week period you could theoretically remove six protectable trees and clear the way for your for your larger project but you wouldn't be able to then in july of the second year take out another protectable tree because you've used your three trees for that calendar year i think that's a very very uh good option and a good compromise and we specified that by by saying protectable non-heritage trees if you want to take out even one heritage tree you got to come you got to you've got to to go through a process to get a heritage tree taken down now and that was my real interest was uh everyone should be subject to having to preserve uh heritage trees uh unless there's some problem uh that unless they have a um uh, uh what i want to say a uh, request for exception uh because of your conditions you've brought up um so you, under under exception two you can take out a heritage tree that is diseased dying right. and imminent threat under exception three that's not you know, heritage trees are not included in exception three very reasonable does uh, anyone else have any any comments no um uh, i'd like us uh, uh mr schnall do we uh do we need to make a motion in order to approve this added language to the ordinance Yes, I think it would be appropriate for um, uh, Mr. Kilgore or whoever wishes to um, make a motion to modify the last draft of the of the proposed ordinance um, to use the subcommittee language to replace the uh, language that's currently in the document under Section 48-24. Um, I do think that uh, that's that's step one i think step two is to see if there are any comments or other suggested changes from members of the committee i do have one uh, suggested change um, for clarification um, and marked a couple of other things that that you all might want to look at for a moment i i i'm as mr rapley will tell you i am not a fan of prolonging a meeting without a good reason but um i i do think it's important uh, especially if this is going to be the meeting where this document is going to be finally moved from the architectural control committee to the council that everybody on the committee have an opportunity to raise anything else um, and if we can't get through it tonight in a reasonable amount of time then I hate to say it but we come back on March 1st um, so I, I do think step one though is to go ahead and get Mr. Kilgore since there seems to be consensus let's get Mr. Kilgore to make the motion to substitute the subcommittee language um, for SEP 48-24 question before we I make that motion did you have comments on 4824 the, the wording there no. okay no um, right. um, I, I highlighted one phrase in it mm -hmm. because it was very important that we limit this to residential properties um, in these districts because there are some non-residential properties in the RR zone mm -hmm. and I dare say there, there dare say there might be some non-residential uses um, in in property in the A double A or B zones not so much double A but A or B so I was glad that this says um, uh, a, a, a residential properties in these zoning districts Mr. Schnell I guess that gives a religious facility uh our uh, uh school uh that may be uh located within a residential zoning uh uh exempt from no, sir, just the opposite okay just the opposite a a a church is a non-residential use but it could be it but the church is on residential zoning 
doesn't matter. It okay. says residential properties. And I view that it says owner occupant, owner occupants of residential properties. Okay. So I, I think it's a fair interpretation to say a residential property that's owner occupied is a residence. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I don't think we'll have big issues in this regard. Um, but to, to directly answer Mr. Kilgore's questions, my comments were not about 4824. I thought you're, I appreciated what you all did to find a balance. Um, you know, I spoke in December about the concern I had about having to come to City Hall to do anything in my yard. Um, and I think this is a fair compromise. All right. And, and as Mr. Schnall mentioned, that March is available next month if you have to cross T's, dot the I's, because this won't go in front of council till their March meeting. It won't go well, next week. I'd like to think that we uh, are pretty much close to the finish line tonight unless uh, there's some issues that uh, haven't been brought up prior. Would you like to make a motion for those exceptions? Yes. Well, I will move that the subcommittee's draft of 48, section 48-24 applicability uh, as presented in our packets this evening uh, be inserted into the draft document of the uh, ordinance that we're working on. Second. Did you get the second? I'll second. Scott. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Schnell, uh, would you like to lead off with comments you might have on the balance of our draft? Um, certainly. Um, the as as the committee knows, the chairman. Um, inserted some uh, sketches um, to illustrate um, diameter at breast height or DBH. And um, the current language, I'm on page two of the ordinance um, in the definition of diameter at breast height. And it says diameter at breast height DBH means the diameter of a tree trunk expressed in inches when measured 4.5 feet above ground level, period. And then there are those, there are the drawings. So I would suggest that between the sentence I just read and the drawings, um, add the following. The C following illustrations of measurement of DBH. So that we have in the ordinance, that's what we're showing them. So I would just add, after the words ground level, I would add C following illustrations of measurement of DBH. Where were you adding that to? After after the sentence with the definition of diameter and above the drawings. Okay. And what was the language again? C following illustrations. Okay. Of measurement of D B H. Now, while we're on that subject, when I prepared this exhibit, if you will, with these drawings, I uh, I took uh, I took and and modified the the one that we had had from the study, uh, in which I I moved them around so they wouldn't be identical to what was there, and I also put in there. Uh, the definition uh, and the different types of of uses uh, under each illustration, which also wasn't in there. So, Mr. Schnall, are we okay with this exhibit uh, uh, from a uh, what did you say a, uh, a copyright? Copyright. Copyright. Is this a copyright infringement? Because I completely changed the drawings from what they were. I, I would say that uh, it probably is not. Um, it's also highly improbable that it would ever be questioned or, questioned or challenged. Um, but um, I, I, I don't know enough about copyright law to tell you 
you know, how much of a deviation you have to have um, in order to not have infringed on someone's copyright. But, but this is not for commercial use. Um, it's unlikely that this would ever be noticed or, or um, uh, in any way acted upon. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, did you have any more items you wanted to bring up? Well, my, one of my other notes was be sure the subcommittee's language for 4824 gets put in. That's been done. And then the only other comment I had, and I, I hope that if anyone else on the committee, if anyone on the committee has comments, please make them after I'm done. But in section 4825, in the, in the third paragraph, there's a statement about buying a, paying a mitigation fee, but it doesn't say who pays the mitigation fee. And I think it's implied that the person asking for the mitigation, asking to be involved in or, or take advantage of this exception would be the one who pays it. But but I wondered whether whether the committee would want to say that that is make it clear that that's at the owner's expense or the applicant's expense, um, just as an abundance of caution and clarity. Don't think it's critical. Don't think it's absolutely necessary, but abundance of clarity. That's 4825. Yes, in the middle paragraph. Where did you insert the the uh, comment about it being the owners or the applicants? I think probably the applicant. I think what we would do is before the little I in parentheses on the second line, and and after the uh, after the the little I in in um, parentheses and after the little two little I's in parentheses, simply adding the words the applicant. Did you see where that was? How about we take that, that sentence that begins, the removal of any heritage tree must be mitigated by the applicant by the following singly or in combination. That works too. It's easier. That would be good. Just yeah. uh, be sure that our city secretary understands where that that comment uh, in that uh, sentence is uh, replaced. Pardon? No. The, the sentence now reads, the removal of any heritage tree must be mitigated by the applicant by the following singly or in combination. So it puts the mitigation and the entity that has to do the mitigation right next to each other. That accomplishes exactly what I was looking for. Um, and Mr. Chairman, th those are the only uh, d the, uh, comments that I had. Um, I, I don't know if anyone, uh, any of the members of the committee have, have other comments. Um, um, if so, I think we wait and you vote on all of them at one time. If there are none others, then someone could make a motion um, to um, recommend to, to, you know, modify the, the draft ordinance um, to include the sentence um, in the definition of DBH that's in the record and the insertion of the phrase by the applicant uh, where Mr. Kilgore recommended it in 4825. Uh, I had a question. Did you want to vote on those two first or? If I, you can vote on those two first and get them out of the way or we can wait and see about other comments and vote on all the uh, uh, amendments or or revisions at one time. It's really up to the committee. I think we ought to. I think we ought to vote on these two yeah, let's, items. Let's get these in and there. Clear those so uh, that will be out of the way. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the amendments proposed uh, by Mr. Snall and Mr. Kilgore. Okay. Um, I do said. I need to read those into the record or do we already have them in that you've 
You've documented them. Okay. I make a motion that we approve those two amendments. I second. Uh, all in favor? Okay. Now, there might be, it sounds like there might be a little bit more discussion. Do you have any, Ms. Scott? I do have a question, and this might be for Mr. Schnall when, you, when he's available. Yes, Ms. Scott. Um, under section 4826 penalties, it says that any violation of this article two shall be a misdemeanor. What class of misdemeanor do, would that fall under, Mr. Schnell? Probably class C. Because okay, we're, we... we're a general law city, type A general law city. We really can't do much more than a, a class C misdemeanor in should municipal clear... court. Should we clarify that, that it's a class C misdemeanor? Because uh -huh. it's for people who don't realize we're a general law a city or um, is it okay just to leave as is I, I think it's okay to leave it as is uh, the penalty provision um for for things that aren't specified is in chapter one of the code of ordinances and it's it says a fine of not to exceed five hundred dollars um so i think you know i mean I, I if someone doesn't know what a misdemeanor is they're not gonna know what a class c misdemeanor is that's sort of where i'm coming i'm from. sorry maybe my i was i was just going well, what kind of misdemeanor is it oh yeah our general law but okay thank you appreciate they're that. they're not going to jail i don't want to go to jail over trees no thank you any other so comments fines either okay um That was the only one I had at the moment. Does anyone else have anything else in here they'd like to discuss? I've got a, a couple of items uh, that I came across in my last, my last review through this. Um, we define a heritage tree and we refer to the State Forest Service. Pardon my ignorance, but do we actually have a State Forest Service? When I... When I looked for the Texas State Forest Service, I got Texas A&M University. The, um, specifically, I found the Big Tree Registry um, on a, as part of Texas A&M uh, TexasForestInfo.tamu.edu. And where is that, is that located? The State forest Service? Where is that located? It's, they're out of Kerrville. The, the state forest services mm -hmm. okay then i didn't find them when i googled texas state forest service um my my question relates to understanding what the state record is for a tree since the heritage trees are tied to the state record for a tree i can't answer that uh uh if 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 you search for it i don't know how you're going to find out that answer if you couldn't find it well i i found the i found the state records for trees but again it was at this texasforestinfo.tamu.edu website ah. and unfortunately when i got there i found out how they measured trees and it is not diameter at breast height it is circumference at <laughs> breast height well, I, I don't really think we ought to go over that uh, issue again. Uh, uh, it's, 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 I've studied several ordinances in San Antonio and around the country, and I've never, uh, I've never uh, found uh, a, a, the measurement to be in circumference terms. Uh, it's always been, uh, the dbh because uh it's it's uh i think it's less confusing than the circumference it is probably less confusing to a professional in the business it's a little less clear to j fred homeowner how to measure the diam the the diameter they can get out their tape measure and go around their tree and know what the circumference is 
but to figure out how to gauge where on an irregularly shaped semi-round trunk to figure diameter. Well, I think you can a stretch a, a, a you can stretch a tape measure and you can visually see it match the diameter. I, the reason I don't want to go back again, we can remove that statute or whatever it might be, but but that's going to then start going back affecting uh, protectable trees and by circumference instead of uh, DBH, which we which which we created. Well, I I think one way to address that is in in our definitions where we have diameter at breast height DBH. Mm -hmm. Change that to circumference at breast height CBH, and do a, a find and replace through the document. If we were to agree to switch to a circumference measure, we could also say that the circumference, or the diameter at breast height, is the circumference divided by pi. We could. I vaguely remember that. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm kidding. What, what, I actually just looked it up. What, what I'm what I'm trying to the problem I'm trying to solve with this discussion is we've called out to a a source of of data the the record the state record for a tree of that species and the state record for that species of tree is not. Unfortunately, I'll go on beyond that. They don't measure just the circumference. They measure the circumference and the height and the canopy or spread. That's what forms the record um, for, for a tree in the state of Texas. So I'm my concern is that we have called out to a standard that may not be uh, easily translated into the way we've written the ordinance. Well, we can discuss it. I, I uh, like I say, I've studied Shavano Park. I've studied Alamo Heights. I've, I've, I've know very well of the city of San Antonio. And what I think has been accepted in, in most cities and municipalities has been the definition that we've given. And, uh, uh, I think if if we talk about circumference divided by pi, I think it's going to get confusing for um, a lot of people. I have a question for Mr. Kilgore. Could you glance at that list real quick? Um, we we could um, take out the section under the definition by saying that a heritage tree. I'm not sure where we came up with this definition. If it's our own or if we got it from somewhere. But it says um, a heritage tree is any one of our approved trees from our list that obtains a DBH of one half of the state record for that tree or has a DBH of 24. So are there any trees on that list that are um, less than 24 inches for the straight record? I'd have to go back and and look at it. The, the record is a database. It's not something that was easily. Oh, that was printable. easily printable. It was a very large database. And, and unfortunately, is, I don't know the password to our guest Wi-Fi here in Chambers, so I can't get on the internet right now. So. Oh, okay. It's on the back wall, but um, yeah. Um, but I guess my question was, could we just strike that out of the definition and just make a heritage tree um, a tree that has a DBH of twenty-four inches or more? You're right. I don't think it has to reference a source we're creating. A, but my a, only concern is if there are trees whose state record is less than 24 inches, then um, uh, if it's larger than one half of the state record. So if there is a tree on our approved list that one half of the state record is, you know, less than 24, I don't want to say 24 is the, that number so well i don't know anybody who would argue argue that fact that matter uh 
uh, if if their tree uh, just based on species is already 24 inches, then uh, I'd can I, I would think that would be considered a heritage tree. And if if I don't know what their argument would be otherwise. Oh well, my only concern is if if it. Okay. Well, I mean, that's my question. Would it be easier, do you think, Mr. Kilgore, if we just struck out that part of the definition about one half of the state record? I want to be fair. I want to make sure where, we're not where, like which which we're not, where are you we're not making a tree have to be bigger than it should be to be protected by using 24 inches as the definition of a heritage tree. Forty eight inches or higher. Yeah, forty inches or bigger. Mm -hmm. Um well that and that that would get rid of the circumference, that would get a get rid of having to look up the state record if we just stated a a number. And considering, let's see. Our approved tree list is um, I was around 20 or 21 on trees and then the ornamental trees. 11 ornamental trees. Since this can't go in front of council until March, could we um, assign that to someone to check and make sure that um, that 24 inches or more would be our definition of heritage tree without penalizing any one of these species. So we're not here longer tonight than we need to be, but it would shorten the definition and well, keep people from have, having to look up the We'd state have record. to call another meeting, though. Oh, okay. We over that one issue. Okay. I I, I, uh, I don't know. I think the 24 inch uh, definition is pretty much universally used to reflect a heritage tree. Uh, I've seen a lot of tree surveys and and I've logged a lot of trees and we've all uh, all come to accept 24 inches as the as the uh, milestone. Did you want to say something about this, Mr. Snow? Um, my thinking was that the committee decide this evening to um, move forward with the ordinance without the with Miss Scott's change. In other words, with the change that uh, takes the def takes this DBH of one half of the state record out of the ordinance, um, and that's what the the committee approves. And at the same time, um, if someone on the committee could volunteer. Um, to check and verify that that we're not putting ourselves in an awkward position because there is a tree species in our approved list where um, the state record is 10 inches or 20 inches instead of 24. If that if we find that, then the committee can just we can call another meeting for March 1st. But there's no reason to 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 not take action tonight. Remove the phrase that concern Mr. Kilgore and I think uh, he, he if it's difficult for Mr. Kilgore to find this on the website it's going to be difficult for what was that Fred J homeowner to find it and so I think we want to make this easy for our citizens to comply in it and Ms. Scott pointed out it's easier to make it simple yes you're right right if you need it if you need it, 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 it. no we don't have a meeting and uh, if there's nothing else on the agenda Yes. This isn't this isn't an automatic meeting. It seems like <laughs> seems like it's the first Wednesday of every month, but it really is. Okay, so uh, to, to move this along, I'm going to make a motion to that will change the definition of heritage tree to read heritage tree means any approved tree having a DBH of 24 inches or more. With the caveat that before our next what would be regularly scheduled meeting um one of our members verifies 
that there is not a random tree that would not qualify under the 24 inch more definition, according to the state forest service. That was not very clear, but was it clear enough for the record? So I have made a motion and, but I don't have a second, so that's okay if it uh, dies. And do you want to second it? I'll second it. All in favor. And I will volunteer to go through our Thank you. tree list and compare um, it to the Texas big tree registry and see if we have created any problems for ourselves. And you have until our next regularly scheduled meeting, whether it happens or not to let Mr. Rapley know. Yes, it will take me that long to get on the guest Wi Fi, I believe. We, okay. we, we, in, in, if it's one item uh, that would take five minutes to approve, we might do it in the form of a Zoom meeting. It, uh, That's up to the city attorney to tell us if we can do that or not. The problem with a Zoom meeting is that you have to have a quorum present in the room. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, so, I, and you know everyone on this committee lives within 1.5 miles of where we are sitting or standing right now. Well, it's this is all very ironic because the reason I started this venture, probably what six eight months ago, uh, to clean up our tree preservation ordinance. The reason I wanted to do that is because we were having such frequent meetings for something that was so superfluous to have a meeting over when one guy had a tree blocking his driveway, he wanted one tree removed on his lot. And the way our ordinance was written, but all trees had to be protected. And so uh, I wanted to simplify this uh, where we had an ordinance that wasn't gray, but it was black and white, where it was very defined. And that's why we've worked so hard to do this. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't I don't I don't think you're going to discover anything that's going to be uh, uh, earth shattering relative to our, the way we've written our ordinance. But uh, I'd like us at least to, as we've as you made the motion and we voted, approve this draft with the with the changes that have been suggested and voted on tonight. Uh, and Louis, uh, I imagine staff will will partake uh, modifying those uh, items in the ordinance. And I don't know if that's, is that you, Louis? And our, our esteemed interim city secretary okay. who's been taking notes and who I'll visit with after the meeting to make sure that her notes and my notes are consistent. Okay, and, and I think it would be appropriate to circulate that that this evening's work product, the draft inclusive of this evening's work product to all the members of the committee, um, not so that you can find another problem, but more to make sure that Correct. this meets what we did this evening and is consistent with what you're comfortable um, having brought to this having been having being brought to the city council for its action. Um, and then if Mr. Kilgore's research indicates that the 24 inch DBH um, isn't appropriate for certain of our approved trees, the chair has the option to call a meeting on March for March 1, um, which could be, like you said, Mr. Middleman, five minutes, but at least have an opportunity for people to know that and decide whether to modify the language that was just recommended and approved. That sounds fine. That, that'll break my record of an eight eight minute meeting we had previously. Um, so I think that's a great idea, but really that will be kind of our record draft that will be presented to council. Uh, and uh, David, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to bring up that issue uh, with our consulting arborist and ask him knowing what's our lit has he's been copied hasn't he been copied ryan uh he's been copied on all these drafts and i'll ask him if there's any trees uh, within our list uh that uh, would be uh uh 
how, how do you want to ask it an exception uh in what we're looking for i think are any trees in which the um, 24 inches dbh is an unreasonable number such that a, a tree couldn't attain that period well okay. in which case like you know, uh, hair, and we looked at that earlier in conjunction with our consulting ar uh, arborist in the ornamental trees section uh -huh. and we lowered some of those numbers from the default 24 inch down to 10 inches eight inches that's already reflected in the draft the the question yeah. i think that's on the table right now is do we looking through our entire list are there any more that need that level of adjustment uh, and i i volunteer to to undertake that effort okay um, and what i'm going to use as my standard is the texas a m university uh, big tree registry which lists the the record holders uh, for state tree species and and i will uh, well, well, i will also briefly point out to ms scott that the texas big tree registry does not agree with her on the spelling of chinkapin oak yes we spell it differently in texas than the rest of the united states spells it so i i did find outside of a and m in texas it is spelled q u if you're in a and m if you go to a and m or you live in texas you spell it with a k so it depends on where you look it up so it, it seems like both spellings are appropriate and my apologies for looking at trees of north america rather than texas trees so um i do see though it was corrected to q uh q u over k i think q u looks nicer but that's just my opinion. I did have another question, and I was hoping someone could point me in this direction, and that we have been talking about that if you are going to trim or remove a tree, you're required to have a permit. I'm having difficulty finding where in here it states you have to have a permit. Um, do you remember where that is? I'm looking for it. I just want to make sure that it's very clear, because I think it's important, even if you are trimming your own trees, taking out your own trees that you pull a permit for the health and safety of the city's trees, you need to know if you're doing it at the appropriate time of year. And I was having difficulty finding where in here it states specifically, you must pull a permit to trim or remove a tree. Forty-eight seventy-seven. Thank you, Mr. Small. I'm not sure what it says, but that's where permits are. It says permits required is the heading of 4877. Yeah. yeah. But it was not my understanding that I needed to get a permit from City Hall to personally trim my trees. Um, Am I mistaken? No, I don't think this is about pruning trees. I think this is about protection See, it says b I, b miss scott says no permit is required to trim prune remove plant um, by individual residents residing in a one or two family dwelling etc look at 48-77b I, I i am that's what i'm looking yeah. at and my question is and i was hoping this was a six minute question or less was i feel we should require a permit even if you are going to trim or prune your trees yourself because if you're doing it during the wrong months you are prone to spreading oak wilt. And if you have to get a permit and you come up to the city hall to get that permit to trim it yourself, you're not paying for a permit, you're just getting the permit, letting the city know that you're pruning or trimming. They can then inform you and educate you that if you have oak trees, you're doing it during the wrong time of year and you're leaving yourself and your neighbors susceptible to oak wilt. So- w wouldn't, that, wouldn't most, uh, most folks that have their trees pruned uh, are being done by some professional usually that has to have a permit in order to do it in the city of Catholic. My husband is very handy. He yeah. likes to uh, take care of a lot of our own landscaping. And I know and a lot he of probably people that, knows when to do it. And he does know when to do it, but he's but. very conscious of that. So not every um, John homeowner or Joe homeowner, Frank, Fred, Fred, Fred homeowner 
might not take the time to look up when they just think, oh, I'm just going to trim this one branch real quick on my oak tree. And next thing you know, you have the beetles flying in and out and getting covered in fungus and going out to spread their um, oak wilt to other places. You can go out to Lowe's any month of the year and buy a saw and go after your own tree. So, so would you like to make, would you like to uh, put some additional language in this section so we can vote on it tonight? Um, I, I would, um, but I wanted to ask Mr. Schnall's opinion of that because everyone is used to not having to pull a permit to do their own trimming or removing for that matter. But I feel for the health and safety of the city and the trees, and that's the, what we're trying to do here, is that it would be wise to require a permit, even if you're doing it yourself, no charge, just make sure that the education um, is given. The city has the chance to hand out a pamphlet on Oak Wilt or whatever they want to do. Also need to paint the cuts. Yes, and they need to know that they need the cuts painted within a certain amount of time. Usually it's within several hours of, of the cuts being made. Oh, that, so that's okay, so putting the, that on the city. That's all in here. Yeah. Yes. That okay. requirement is in here, even for sub B, where it says um, individual residents are required to comply with Division Two planting, removing, and care of trees, which begins on the next page over. And it specifically has the statement about painting of wounds to oak trees. Um, you know, I, I, I share Ms. Scott's concern about our doing everything we can reasonably do to inhibit and, and, and stop the spread of oak wilt. Um, I think it's a, a big education project to tell homeowners who have lived in this community 20, 30 or more years that, and, and have always never had to pull a permit for tree trimming, that they're going to have to pull a permit to trim three branches off a tree in their yard. I, I just think that's an education problem. The city can, through its newsletter, um, highlight the months in, during which trimming of oak trees is prohibited, which is basically February through June. Um, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see, trying to think if there's a way, thinking about the word balance that was used earlier, where, where we can uh, try and make it clear to people when you can and when you can't um, without forcing someone to get a permit or have code enforcement come to their house and say, well, you know, your neighbor reported you for trimming your trees on Sunday. Don't do it again. Maybe that is the answer. Um, I, I don't know. I, I do think that it's a difficult thing to change people's longtime habits. Um, and, and so I think it's reasonable to put restrictions on tree removal. I think that, that 4824 is a great balance to do that. I'm not quite there on tree trimming, um, but I do think we can emphasize, um, and maybe it's a matter of, um, of making it more clear in 48-77A, um, where the last sentence says, permits issued for oak tree trimming, et cetera, include non-oak trees. Um, uh, maybe we should con could consider that a permit is required to trim an oak tree. That's already provided for in um, 4878. That already is? Yes, any branches. Uh, the last sentence were in, under the section labeled oak trimming prohibited February through June says that any branches posing an immediate threat of danger to persons or property may be trimmed during the prohibit prohibited month with the issuance of a special permit and the pr approval of city manager. Okay. So maybe in 4877B, we point them to 4878. I would suggest that because as a homeowner, once I see B, no permits required to trim, boom, I'm done. I'm reading. I don't need a permit. Subject to section 48-78. Yes. No permit is required. Yes. And that's that maybe the best way to solve this problem. I, really I like not, that solution. I'm really glad that definition of, of uh it being defined as prohibited from February to June. Mm -hmm. That takes care of that item. So would you like to reword that, make a motion and reword that for section 4877B? Yes, I'll, I'll make a motion that um, section 48-77B be revised to begin subject to section 48-78 comma, no permit is required to trim, prune, remove, et cetera, et cetera. 
Anybody want to second that? I'll second. All in favor? Okay, did you get that? Okay. Any other uh, discussions? We're going to have, when all this is, is formulated into a final draft with all these modifications, then uh, our city manager will distribute this to all committee members so uh, we can make a last pass on it. And then it will otherwise go before city council uh, on, on their March agenda. Yeah, right. that's that is the plan, and and I think that if any member of the committee believes it's important or necessary to have a, another committee meeting, which would ordinarily be on on March one, um, if they could simply notify Mr. Rapley, um, March eighth is not the first uh, Wednesday in a in March. That would be March first. That's why I said March first. I'll leave the dates to the JD. <laughs> okay i'd like to make if, if, if y'all could let mr rapley know by um february 21st or 22nd um so that we have time to get the you know a week ahead uh so we have time to frame an, uh, an agenda and get it posted by um friday the 23rd i guess yes friday the 23rd i think we've we've gone over this so many times and if really we're asking questions that have been answered already in within the ordinance so i think that it we we've, we've done a pretty darn good job with uh, with the uh, commitment and and uh uh representation of our committee i, I think that uh, it's going to be a big boon for the city now would they be putting this in if the council approves it would that go in as an amendment to uh to our current ordinance, or mm -hmm. would it be would it, no, be, it would be new language? It would be repeal and replace. Okay. Okay. I don't I don't ordinarily recommend that, but here I would recommend repeal and replace. So so it's almost like a living document as far as uh, it being required uh, as of the time in which it's put in the ordinance. Right. Although um, because it does have penalties in it. We will have to publish either the entire ordinance or preferably I'll write a long enough caption for the ordinance itself that will um, allow the city manager to have the caption published. But if when the when a, a type A general law city adopts an ordinance with a penalty in it, the statute requires that um, either the caption that includes a description of the penalty be published or the whole ordinance be published. And with the cost of publication now, we generally only publish the caption. Um, so I will I will take the liberty to put a caption on this document after Ms. Craig circulates the final revised version. Um, and that would be ready for the council's action on March 14th. I think council will probably have a public hearing on March 14th just to allow anyone interested to comment on the ordinance. Um, and it, the council could act on March 14th or it could defer action um, until the to the April council meeting. Um, um, and it, it, yeah, I guess it would be March 14th, right? Yeah. Um, I'm, the, I'm not sure when the April council meeting would be. No, the, the council meeting will be, um, uh, will it, will it, yeah, I guess it will be March, March 14th, yeah. Yeah, if they'll put if you'll put this subject on the agenda as the first item, I'll come that night to uh, uh, answer any questions uh, that maybe the audience will be interested in or any of the committee members that they're interested in going to that particular council meeting. I've had to do that a couple of times to answer any questions the uh, council might have regarding uh, a definition of what uh what needs explanation okay, i'll so see what i can do uh, we got a we're going to have a heavy agenda uh for march that's why I um, to go but first we'll, we'll uh we'll see what we can do depending on what happens in zoning okay uh the day the week before as well okay so it sounds like we're ready to make a motion um so i i move 
that we approve our amended tree ordinance uh, to be sent to the city council for their March meeting to repeal and replace the existing tree ordinance as uh, written, unless by February 21st, one of the members finds fault and contacts, his, contacts Mr. Rapley for a March meeting. It's a long, uh, it's a long motion, but uh, I'll second it if no one else will. What, was it clear enough? It needs yeah, to make a motion to send it on to city council in March, unless by February 21st, one of our committee members finds fault and asks for another meeting before then. All right, well, I've seconded it. Does, can we have a vote? Everyone that approves it? Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, well, if there's no further discussion. There I, is. Oh, there is? Sorry. I'm sorry, yes, Mr. Um, Kilgore. I've actually already been through our approved tree list and compared it to the Big Tree Registry. Uh -huh. And I've got a couple of clarifications or questions to okay. ask related to the approved tree list. I've already talked briefly about the spelling of chinkapin. Um, Monterey Oak is on our approved tree list, and it is not in the registry at all. There is no Monterey Oak. Um, the We have a listing for a Chinese pistachio, and the registry shows a pistache, P-I-S-T-A-C-H-E, not a pistachio. Um, I'm not going to worry so much about the spelling of bald cypress, which the registry puts as one word instead of two. Um, for sycamores, they list an American and a Mexican sycamore. Which sycamore are we referring to or are referring to them both? Well, I can't answer that. We would have to get, if we'd have had our tree arborist here tonight, uh, uh, can you repeat those particular species to me? Sure. Um, Monterey oak doesn't appear at all. Where we have a Chinese pistachio, the registry refers to a Chinese pistache, P-I-S-T-A-C-H-E. Okay. The registry treats bald cypress as a single word instead of a two word tree name. Which one? Bald cypress. I'm trying to find that one. Oh, there. It's at the bottom. What did you the, say about that? Bottom of the list on the front page. Just one word. It's, it's just, what did you say? It's just one word. What bald, word? Bald, bald cypress. All one word. word. Yeah. Okay. Um, same thing for the Montezuma bald cypress on the next, on the top of the next page. That's one word. Yep. Well, it's two words, Montezuma. You mean it cypress. should be one word? It For the Montezuma bald cypress, it's Montezuma is one word, bald cypress is the second word. The Anaqua, A-N-A-Q-U-A on our list, is A-N-A-C-U-A on the registry. Sure, A-N-A-C-U-A. For sycamores, again, they list two different kinds of sycamores and we're just broadly saying sycamore. So do we have a, uh, a refinement of that, or are we just going to leave it as broadly as, regardless of which uh, type of sycamore? Any others? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Same thing for magnolia. They list a bunch of different kinds of magnolias. Um, we list an Afghan pine. They have an Afghanistan pine. That's pretty pretty straightforward, I think. Um, 
Tree Trivia, the national co-champion for the Texas Mountain Laurel, is here in San Antonio. Um, Mexican Plum is also not listed in the registry. Crepe Myrtle, um, I believe, is listed as the common crepe myrtle. A gallery Pear is not listed. Um, golden Lead Ball is listed in the registry as a golden ball lead tree. The Chitalpa is not listed in the registry either. And finally, the Anacho orchid tree is not listed. This is the next to the last one on the list. So I, I think we have some cleaning up to do on the approved tree list just to, to bring it in context of the now, what is your what was your source? My source was the Texas Big Tree Registry. Texas Big Tree Registry. All right. Could you check and see if there's a Mexican white oak listed? There is a Mexican white oak, also known as the nettle leaf white oak. Its, it's record circumference is 101 inches. It's often sold as a Monterey oak. So we have Monterey oak. Monterey, our Monterey oak is should be a Mexican white oak because so. it's another name for it. Okay. So. so, Mr. Chairman, um, what I might suggest is that um, Mr. Kilgore get the, those corrections to the city secretary so that we can update the names. Uh, my view is whether they're on the list or not, if they're on our list, they stay on. I don't see any harm in that at all. Um, and um, I was going to ask Mr. Kilgore, uh, I'm uh, impressed with a tree with 101 inch uh, as the state record. Were any of the state records under 24 or under 48? I haven't long done that. Oh, haven't yet. done that follow up? Okay. I could sit here and do that. I can. I, I can get on the I, I internet. I think everyone would rather sit something. at their homes while you do that, but it's <laughs> yes. up to the committee. We'll let you do that at your house, Mister Kilsman. <laughs> I, I have better internet at my house, anyway. <laughs> now, is the treaty oak still living in Austin? Last I heard, it was. Yeah. Because you know, trees are are living, living, uh, living forms i guess you could call it and sometimes they age to the point where they're too old to be uh uh worthwhile uh so uh some of these old old trees have probably outlived their their growth their their usefulness all right well can we agree on that then uh well, mr kilgore um yes but well, we have a motion, so you're fixing it, and it's going out. And unless anyone has any trouble before the 21st of February, it's going to City Council. Perfect. That's great. Perfect. So I am going to be bold and ask the call for an adjournment. I'll second. All in favor? Meeting adjourned at 8:17 p.m. Thank you.